Well, here's one that is a little bit different from many of the requests we get. Um, this person says, um, I've been trying the Alla Prima approach and have tempted, um, oh no, but find myself lost in the goop. Uh, and then he goes on to do other explanations. He said, the, uh, do you have any videos about starting with the medium, starting with the medium and ways to deal with it? Well, how about if we start without the medium? First of all, I want to go through just a little bit of explanation. Alla prima uh, is normally means in one sitting, but that is sort of a, a really tight way of using the term. The, to, in today's world, alla prima means we get most of the painting done in one session of painting, but it doesn't mean we can't go back to it later, but that wasn't the question. The question was, about medium, uh, controlling medium. My question is why use medium at all? Now, somehow, somewhere along the way, uh, artists got the idea that you always have to use medium or mix medium in with your oil while you're painting. Well, for some techniques that works just fine. With Alla Prima, you don't need it. With Alla Prima, you're controlling the amount of paint that goes in the brush. So I just want to show you a, a way of loading your brush and, brush and using the paint to, to kind of guide you a little bit. And maybe that can help make the Alla Prima process a little bit easier. Well, I have here one of my favorite subjects, of course, which is trees. But what I've done here uh, is I've shown you a one section of this tree. Because before you start, it's a good idea to have a plan, to know where you're going, to have a sequence of applying the paint, what Helen Van White used to call sequence of application, which is what I just said. But a, a good process, a way to sort out your process, is to start, first of all, by finding the shadow patterns of your subject. Now, I've taken one little section right up here, and put right here the shadow pattern. Everywhere you see just those darks is the pattern of shadow. That's called no tan. That's what my no tan is all about, the pattern of shadow. Of course, what's left is the pattern of light. Now, if you have the shadow of pattern, uh, shadow of pattern, the pattern of shadow, then you have a step one of a plan, a way to go. Then the next step in my process, uh, I usually place a no tan here first, but I didn't want to do that here because I want you to be able to see how the paint goes on and you can see it more easily against the paint, the, uh, the uh, canvas. But this sort of pattern will go on my canvas first, done in a medium such as a uh, watercolor or a water-based medium for oil, or if it's uh, a, or if you're working in acrylic, uh, you would want to let that dry before you start working. Uh, oh, you wouldn't use, you would use the water base, which would be fine, but you want that dry before you start working. But if you're in oil, I could also place that uh, oh, no, no tan by doing the lift out, which is, makes it a faster way to go. And for foliage, you can get truer patterns in the foliage. Now, if you want to see how that's done, go to Quick Tip 207. Now, all that's just background for the process of getting a good plan to get started. I find that a good sequence to work in oil is dark to light. Now what that means is I'll start with what I call the darkest shadows or the deep shadows. So everything that exists in this area is in shadow but it's not all the same value. In shadows we will have the the deep shadows and we will have more moderate shadows where a little bit more ambient light is hitting it and we'll have more shallow shadows. So block those in first in Alla Prima 
and then the lights fit into that. Well, how do you do that? How do you load the brush without medium and make that work? That's, that's the issue. Now, here's what I suggest to you. First of all, I suggest that you treat your canvas or you get it very slightly dampened with just a little bit of oil. I use a mixture 50-50 poppy oil and Gamsol. Uh, just a little bit on a cloth and rub it into the canvas and then wipe it off. That gives you a nice surface so that your brush strokes will flow more smoothly. That will eliminate any need for medium at all. Then I'll start with the deepest shadow, wherever the deepest shadow is. Now I'm going to do a very short demonstration. We, you know, this is quick tip, so we try to keep them quick. Um, I'm going to just do a short demonstration just with a section here to show you a just a little process that I think you will find works really well. And, uh, and you won't get goop. And that is start out, now when you load the brush, you have uh, have your paint ready. When you load the brush, don't stick your brush directly into the pile of paint and pick up a big gob of paint. Control the amount that goes in the brush so you can put a, what we would call a thin layer of paint here, but one that covers the surface. So if you go just to the edge of the paint with your brush, you pull a little bit, you see there? You pull a little bit of paint. Let's hold this up so that you can see. Just, uh, it need not be more than about halfway down the brush, or maybe not that far, on both sides. And both sides just gives you a, a, a more evenly loaded brush. You see, see how I have that loaded there. Uh, now, and then you look at the pattern of the shadow, of the, the deep shadow. And now watch. You can stroke that in. If you hold the brush at an angle, about a 45 degree angle from the from the surface, then you can stroke that in. You see that goes on nice and smooth, but it's not thick. Now the reason it's important for it not to be thick is so that you can build the colors and control the colors and values um, as you complete the painting without getting goop. So we control that just like that. And you can work that shadow, that pattern, and you can continue to load the brush, but control the amount of paint that goes in the brush. And each time, when during this part of the process, each time load the brush the same way. Each time keep that angle of the brush at about a 45 degree angle and just stroke it in the direction that you see that shadow going. So in this case, you see it moves kind of moving in that direction right there, just the shadow portion. Now, to be, then build towards that shadow and I like to wipe the brush gently just like that I'll keep that the I won't I won't rinse it but I'll wipe it by not rinsing it I still have some of the paint in there and I also also have the shape of the brush uh, held pretty close so that the bristles don't splay away I'll reach into the next value up now I like to use a value line on the palette setup before I go that uh, uses the whatever mixtures of colors I'm going to be using in the painting. And so I'll load that the same way. Now, for the moderate shadow of the next value up of the shadow, I will then go over here and get it slightly darker. Now watch what happens. Same thing. Not much paint, but enough to cover the, the, the surface of the canvas. Uh, but if you can't see it, but there is no indication of brush stroke here because the small amount of paint that actually goes on there. So see, you don't need the medium. The medium will uh, go, go call, cause you to go out of control. You'll get transparent layers. You put too much medium in there, it's going to be too thin. And it just causes you to lose control of what happens here. And that's why it will end up being a big goop. So if I move up the, uh, the value scale just a little bit, now you can see I can pull this in, and as I pull it in, use the brush to blend it. That and then enables it to be more a la prima, which means that in the block in layer, I can get a lot done. I can get a lot of those values defined as we see those values moving more into uh, towards the light in that shadow area. I can get those values more defined without getting the paint really thick. So just loading that brush the way I instructed you like that 
holding at that angle it, it goes more smoothly onto the surface of the canvas and then I can uh, continue the process like that and keep control of it and then of course to go for the next value up I'll do the same thing pull out the excess of the of the on the from the brush and I'll move over to maybe a lighter value now and uh, begin to move it out of shadow and into light as we see happening about right up in there so you see now and I can use the use the corner or tip of the brush to blend now with a la prima uh, you can choose whether you want to block in first or whether you develop the whole painting as you go and a lot of that can depend upon the time element if you're in plain air painting you might want to develop it as you go and just let the block in serve as a part of the whole process of of putting the painting together and so I see right here I have a little bit more light coming so I can just pull that light right down and I've got it uh, I've got the, the the colors control here don't have too much paint in the rest. now watch what happens here you see I can go back into that and holding the same angle now I can lighten those sections and then I can go back to this and load it the same way each time uh, and then get the lighter portions see they're going like that like that and and so on now that's a funny a funny shape folks so busy there developing or teaching you how to load the brush and develop the technique wasn't watching the shape there but then that doesn't matter I can change that shape by keeping the same process controlling the amount of paint now part of pulling the paint out of the brush like that also helps you control the amount of paint that goes into the brush and so if I need to reshape it then I can do this and I can get it darker I can get it lighter I can make the shape merge into other shapes now this is going back into the deeper shadow shape going like this see um, and keep always keeping an eye on how much paint is in that brush and now if I want to change colors I will rinse the brush and here's another clue for you another key to how to make this work and keep control of it uh, I always I have gam oh, yeah, um, I have a, a odorless mineral of spirits any kind of odorless mineral spirits in your in your brush washer works and I always one way I like to do this is just to push the brush inside you can't see it on the camera probably I push the brush uh, underneath the, the liquid into the edge of the the uh, container and and turn it to cause that paint to drop out now the next clue or key here is to thoroughly dry that brush absolutely thoroughly dry it if you don't then it's going to act as a medium and it's going to thin the paint and you will lose control so there's certain things you can do here that control the amount of paint that goes on and enable you to control what happens and if I want as I said before I want to change color suppose we want to go to the blue here I don't try to mix that blue with the brush I go with my palette knife I find what I need in this case I'm going to have to go I want to go into that blue of the sky and so in this case for what I need in this area right here I uh, will just move over into ultramarine blue and pull it into white and get the value I want first now, so I'll do all the mixing on the um, of this. I'll do the the changing of color and the actual mixing of color. I do on the palette. Then the blending of the colors I do on the canvas. Uh, so there's another clue for you. Now I'll pull that on the back of the brush and I'll say, okay, it's a little dark. So that means I need to make it perhaps a little bit lighter, just that area. I'm not going to make the whole thing lighter because I'll want to have a variation. But this is just to get you going so let's try that let's see all right that's pretty close it seems a little too blue and so then i'm going to move into the uh the green itself let's move right over here into this green and add a little bit of white to that right there and let's just mix that into the blue and that should yeah there you go that should um take that uh harshness of the blue and make it there it goes closer to the same kind of light we see there then load the brush clean brush clean dry brush load it the same way load it both sides only uh, oh 
half no 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 further down the brush than halfway down i usually will load mine about a third way down just by the way i have it angled against the palette it works out that way now if i want a little sky right there i can just put it in right there just like that by using that um scumbling method where you allow the brush to slide allow the paint to slide on top of the paint didn't have the brush quite loaded enough that time uh then you can begin to build your painting so you see now i can punch sky holes in here i've got sky holes right there uh and then or and then i can just uh if i've got more sky like at the edge here i can begin to build that now make the edges blend into the edges i've already have there and then build the sky on out and so now i hope that gives you uh, enough of a, a handle on just a simple process of ditch the medium all together for what you're talking about controlling a la prima ditch the medium the paint does not need the medium in fact restorers tell us that when we add medium to the paint we actually uh, decrease the integrity we we, we uh, weaken the integrity of the paint the paint comes out of the tube already perfectly uh, formulated especially if you buy artist grade paint so ditch that medium uh, one thing that might help is to stick with brands of paint that are a really creamy consistency. There's no use to really use a really stiff paint, uh, which is made for palette knife painting more than anything else. Uh, I, uh, that just sort of slows you down and makes you feel that you have to have the medium in there. So ditch the medium. Uh, be careful uh, or load the brush with care. Keep the brush clean as you're working and be sure the brush is dry. And I think you find that you can actually do all the Prima painting after all. Be sure and view all of our quick tips. And while you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section, and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DyingMize.com, where I have full-length lessons downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter, and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.